Have you ever found yourself in a conversation about movies with someone and halfway through realized you made a huge mistake? I have, many, many times, especially over the internet, a place where stupidity goes to thrive. Today I wanted to broach this subject by diving into the conversations we have between movie lovers and just your basic movie watchers, because there is a very big difference between the two, although oftentimes they're conflated. Oftentimes, one feels like they're very similar to the other. Let's jump in and talk about it. If you're new to YouTube, you may not understand this, but at this point, I am supposed to tell you to subscribe to the channel so that you see future videos from me. That's just how it works. I have to say it. So please subscribe to the channel. Like this video if you like it later. You don't have to do it now. You might not actually like it until later, but uh, that's something that you should do. Comment below giving me your thoughts. All right, let's talk about this subject. This got brought up, thankfully because I still look at my comments. Uh, I try to do my best to have a healthy distance and a healthy relationship between the people I respond to and those I know to actively avoid. Recently, I put out a review for a terrible movie by a Coen brother called Drive Away Dolls. I hated the movie. I gave many reasons as to why. I could see why some might find it charming in their own sick way, but I did not. I thought it was just miserable from top to bottom. Regardless, someone in the comments kind of pushed back and said, hey, Adam, I don't agree. I actually had a better time with this than you did. I did fall asleep twice, though, during it, but the parts I saw were pretty good. What in the hell kind of a pushback is that? What does that even mean? I thought it was better than you, but I fell asleep twice during it? Are you out of your mind with that defense? I actually made it through the whole film, so wouldn't I, just by default, have liked it more than you? This is just such a weird way to... <laughs> almost too much honesty in that approach. Hey, I liked it more than you did, even though I missed 25 minutes of it due to being bored out of my mind. Not a great defense. And that just leads to the broader topic which I'm talking about, which is getting in these pointless debates with people about... What makes a good movie, or what makes a movie bad, or why your opinion is more valid than theirs? At the end of the day, it is an opinion. You can objectively look at some parts of a movie and say, yeah, that sound design's really well done. The picture quality is really good. But when the conversation starts with I feel, or I think, or I know, these are not measurable, calculatable things that you can address. They're just the feelings you have. And it is okay to acknowledge that you might not know as much about film as someone else, or you might look for different things than others, or you might get value out of things others don't based on your own criteria. Another example that comes to mind is once in a while I go on another live show and I talk with people and one of them says, hey, I like this movie. I was cooking in the background. I was doing the dishes and it was just on. And I would kind of check in from time to time and laugh on occasion. It's a comfort food. It's a movie that you're kind of like passively watching. It's in the distance. It's like a friend that's there that you don't want to get too close with. You, you know about them, but you don't want to know them that well. And to me, that doesn't make a movie good. That just means a movie exists in the same area as you do. <laughs> it's such a silly thing to be like, I like the movie. I couldn't tell you the plot. I couldn't tell you any of the lines of dialogue, but there was stuff happening and I like the actors in it. So therefore good to me. All right. Is that really, is that really something we should use as a criteria going forward? Is that the checklist we should go over? Cinematography, music, sound design, acting, story. On this side, we have uh, Mary's criteria. Um, it was on. There were people in it that I knew and liked. It ended. Next movie came on by Netflix automatically based on my viewing habits. This is so stupid. And, and the, the reason I bring this up is when this side says something with these measurable goals and things that you can actually look at, and then this side pushes back and says, how dare you, you're stupid. I like this movie because it was on and Netflix recommended it and I like the people in it. You are not on the same level here. 
This side, the side that I fall on as a movie lover, as someone had seen a ton of movies, studies them, is familiar with the actors and, and the writing process and all that, I know what to look for that I can say objectively follows suit and as a whole, it's a well-constructed piece of art or piece of, you know, whatever. I'm part of the medium. This person over here is just looking for something to put on on a Sunday rainy afternoon while they do the dishes or while they're putting a puzzle together. They're not the same. They're not the same. And that's the reason why even on Rotten Tomatoes, a site that obviously doesn't have good name recognition, well, it has good name recognition. I wouldn't say it has uh, positive name recognition, but it does exist and a lot of people trust them and go to that site still, regardless of how we might feel about it personally. The reason that the critics are certified there is so that Mary isn't a certified critic and can just say like, I like Jennifer Lopez, therefore her new movie, This Is Me, dot, 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 now is phenomenal. Uh, amazingly enough, I reviewed the new Jennifer Lopez movie. I did not like it. I thought it was terrible. There were a couple fans that came over and um, to say that their criticisms of me or their praise of her movie were well-constructed is, is just asinine. They were absolutely ridiculous. One of them was a was like a four paragraph run on sentence. I don't know when one sentence started and the other finished. It was just one blob of of whatever that person was thinking at the time. Not well thought out at all. Not well constructed either. I could barely make heads or tails of it. But they put it out there. That's for sure. And I'm sure glad that person is not a critic. I'm sure that person's not. I'm glad they're not certified on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> that's what the viewer. That's what the general audience score is for over there. During this video, I took a drink of water from this comically large jug here. It's like a 17 gallon jug and I spilled on my shirt. Let me back up so you can see the embarrassment. There's water on my shirt. I'm also wearing kind of a striped shirt, which is not a good idea for film. It, it tends to it tends to artifact and not come out right. It has a striping effect. This is not good. So just all around a complete shit show, but we're going to push past it. We're going to move on and you're just going to have to deal with the fact that just out of frame, just in frame, I should say, there's a water streak going down my shirt. Maybe just listen and not watch. Just listen because it's just me in front of a camera anyways. There's not much to see here at the end of the day. With the power of AI, I could probably go in and remove this water spot, but we're going to keep it in for the raw organic look that I'm going for here. Another great example that I brought up on a live stream a few months ago was I was back in Minnesota meeting some friends and family and one acquaintance that was with asked if I saw the new Guardians of the Galaxy film, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 to be more specific. I said, yeah, I, I thought it was great. I loved it. And he was not a fan and he had no problem saying, really? I thought it sucked. I thought that movie was trash. And then I followed up. I said, oh, pray tell why. Go on, continue. And he really didn't have any way to put into words why. It was just his emotional response to the film was not good. It was just, I just didn't like it. I thought it sucked. I thought it was trash. Kind of regurgitating the same points he had already made without any substance behind him. And I asked for a little bit more in-depthness to it. Could you just push past that it sucked? Like, why? What was bad? Visually, you didn't like it. Were the act was the acting bad? Did he not like the story? And then he kind of went a little bit further once I pushed him and he said, I just thought it was too silly. I thought it was too jokey, which kind of made me scratch my head because I thought it was the more serious of the three. And he was on the completely opposite end of the spectrum there saying, no, it was too many jokes. It was stupid. It just wasn't, the jokes weren't funny. It undercut everything else. He didn't say undercut, that's unfair. He just said it was stupid and silly. And I guess that's fair. Guardians of the Galaxy movies are stupid and silly in a fun, kind of intelligent way. I know, stupid and intelligent in the same sentence, that doesn't make sense. But if you know James Gunn and how he writes and approach things, there is some method behind the madness. He makes things intentionally seem kind of stupid and silly, but at the end of it, there is there is messages, there are stories being told, there is character growth. And I don't think my, my buddy's friend really saw that stuff, or maybe he wasn't that familiar with the other movies. That was my follow-up. I said, have you seen Guardians 1 and 2? They are silly. There's a lot of jokes. 
And he just kind of dismissed it and said, yeah, those were better. This one sucked. So fair enough. Okay. I'm kind of glad that he's not writing for the Tribune. I'm kind of glad that he's not a, uh, you know, certified critic. Not that they're all perfect. Not, I mean, I'm one. So obviously there's a pretty low threshold. But I think being able to put into words more than it's bad, it's garbage, it's trash, kind of the hyperbole that you see often i mean I, I i use the same stuff it's youtube right you got to put it in the thumbnail you got to be larger than life and once you draw people in you can be a little bit more subdued although if i think something's trash it's pretty accurate what i put on the thumbnail and vice versa i don't say it's hot garbage and then when the review starts i'm like oh it wasn't that bad i tend to not do that i try to be fair i guess to really put a bow on what i'm saying here I find these conversations fruitless, without fruit, no fruit bearing conversations where someone just kind of doesn't really get where you're coming from and you're not going to change their mind. And at the end of the day, do you need to? No, of course not. It's entertainment. It's for you to enjoy. This guy paid money to see the film. And so he has a say. He didn't like what he saw. He felt like he didn't get his uh, reward at the end. And I think that's fair. Movies are longer now. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is over two hours. I think it's two and a half hours long. And so if you're sitting there miserable with something, yeah, buyer beware. Buyer also gets to state their case. Buyer can say whatever the fuck they want about a movie, good, bad, or the otherwise. And I very much champion that. Free speech on this channel is what it's all about. Some people will say, Adam, you're too harsh on movies, or you just like to knock movies down or give crap to people and it's not constructive, it's just mean and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? You're giving me criticism. And oftentimes, ironically, the people that say that to me name call me, they threaten me, they, they make fun of me in appearance, the channel being trash, whatever. They say the exact same things. And I'm not crying at the end of the day. I'm still making content at the end of the day because I love doing this. And I'd like to think that directors, actors, writers are in the same exact position, just on a larger scale. They like what they do. Some of them don't believe it or not. They're just doing it as a paycheck. They're doing it for the work. Madam Webb was an example recently that got brought up. I saw people in the comments claiming they worked on the movie in some capacity and everyone knew the movie was gonna be awful. They were just putting in the work, whether you're a key grip, you're doing the lights, you're doing the sound, you're doing the camera work, lots of jobs, lots of jobs. So it's probably, it's probably telling if they know going in that it's bad, but they're still there because at the end of the day, you're paying your bills, right? It is work to a lot of these people. I grew up going to movies and chatting movies with my buddies all the time. I had a friend come up here from Minnesota just recently, a weekend or so back, and it was great just chatting film, talking about our favorite movies, quoting movies, you know, we geek out about that stuff. And we're on the same level as far as the conversation goes. So it's easy to have a back and forth dialogue, laugh, get angry at movies we didn't like, look forward to films we're excited about. And then you go onto the comments on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or whatever, and you see just like these stupid things being said, and you kind of hope it's from an eight-year-old but then you're sad that an eight year old is able to go on a video and say the dumb shit they're saying. And then on the other side, you're like, oh God, it's probably like a 35 year old that's just stupid. And that's just how it is. But you have to stay in your lane, I guess is the, the point I'm trying to make. If you don't know much about movies or how to have a conversation about movies or know where someone else is coming from, just shut up. That's not that hard. Just shut up. Or say you like the movie and walk away. Or give a reason why you like the movie and why the movie didn't work. But simply just saying it sucks or it's amazing and not having any follow-up is kind of silly and pointless. I do the same thing about everything. I don't go on message boards or on any other social media platform and go into an artist's songs or whatever and be like, Taylor Swift sucks or Taylor Swift's amazing. You're an idiot for not liking her or so-and-so doesn't know anything about politics or this or that. It's just, I'm not educated enough or knowledgeable to speak on those subjects. And I think more often than not, people think they are, or they just don't care that they're not. And they'll just say whatever they want anyways, because there's no consequences almost ever. And that's just the sad truth of it all. I guess the point I'm making is if you're a movie lover, you know this stuff. 
you know about all these films, you know about all these actors, you know about all the reshoots and how much it costs and all this stuff, and you know what to look for that makes a movie good. If you're just a movie consumer though, you might not have any interest in that stuff and that's fine. You just have it on in the background like a song by Olivia Rodrigo. It's on, it's poppy, it's getting the job done. That's great, I don't think about it at the end of the day. I'm building a Lego set and it's keeping me occupied. And that's perfectly fine. Just don't come onto my channel or go on other channels or start talking in person or in public about this stuff because you don't know shit. You're basic and that's fine. Leave it to us. We'll stay in our lane, you stay in yours. All right, let me know if you've had any awkward conversations with people in the real world or in this sad new real world, which is online for the most part. Twitter is a great place. The artist formerly known as Twitter X, great place to have real deep dive discussions with some really intelligent individuals that definitely know what they're doing. Love it. Let me know. Please like the video again. If you made it here and you did like it, now's your chance. Subscribe to the channel again. You're here. You might as well do it. There's a notification bell somewhere so that these show up in your feed. You can give. You can become a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Tons of exclusive videos. Every month there's vlogs that are accessible only for subscribers, Patreon supporters, I should say. And... You could even leave a super thanks right here on the video. There's an icon. You say, five bucks, Adam. Nice job. You said what I thought. All right, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully I see you next time. And oh, look, the water dried. <laughs> Perfect.